Grace Matt Thompson made headlines in 1934 after murdering her first husband's second wife. John Jack Thompson, the first husband, was an influential mafia man in Kansas City. With his connections, he was able to get Grace declared insane so she would not have to stand trial for murder. Soon after entering the asylum, she escapes to New Orleans. In 1935, Jack heads down to New Orleans to visit Grace and her daughter Dorothy, who is in the habit of calling him Daddy Jack, despite having been born while Grace was with her second husband. While staying at the Young Hotel, he dies mysteriously. When questioned about the suspicious death, Grace claimed she never made it to the hotel and was sure someone had killed him for his $500,000 gambling treasure. Prior to and at the start of her pet cemetery, Grace ran a flower shop on Ferret Street. She also published the book, A Garden Book of Old New Orleans, and played organ for Our Lady of Lourdes Church. A talented pianist with vaudeville root, she wrote several hymns for a popular hymnal that was used around the country. Kansas City authorities tracked her down by finding this hymnal. While awaiting trial, she escaped once again. This time, she moved to a more remote area outside of New Orleans called Toka in St. Bernard Parish. She purchased some land and an Edwardian home for about $8,000. In 1948, she opened the E.E. E. Matt Pet Cemetery. When Missouri authorities track her down again, the Louisiana governor refuses to send her back. The front of the cemetery had an ornate gate. The first visible tomb was a large memorial for Boots, a beloved member of the New Orleans Police Canine Unit. Behind the dog, a cemetery blessing was on a large stone. Pet Cemetery, founded in 1946 by Grace Matt Thompson. Dear Father, hear and bless thy beasts and singing birds, and guard with tenderness small things who have no words. Grace often used the section of the newspaper up and down the street to advertise the cemetery. Maud O'Brien made the advertisement sound more like editorial pieces. She started before the cemetery even opened. In 1946, a write-up says, a local woman and her daughter will operate the venture and ends with, announcement of the opening will be made soon. By March 6, 1954, Grace states that she has two cats and 33 dogs buried on the property. In a 1956 ad, she claims a nine-year-old hen, a 30-year-old parrot, loads of monkeys and parakeets, 85 cats, and 800 dogs. The 1965 numbers seem to be inflated for marketing purposes. Dorothy killed her first husband on the property after a drunken squabble where no charges were filed. Her second husband is also killed on the property and the sheriff ruled it a suicide. The neighbor heard two shots and thinks that the women killed him as well. In 1977, Grace dies. Her grave is unmarked and not around the foliage and animals she adored. Dorothy continues the pet cemetery, hiring various people from town to help with maintenance as she is in poor health. She often hires Brandon Nodier. Brandon gets Dorothy to lease the property to him while intoxicated. At some point, Dorothy realizes what she has signed and starts to take action to avoid the contract. In 1985, Dorothy is re reported missing by her friend Patricia, who takes her to the grocery store and pharmacy. A few weeks later, her body is found in the river in the neighboring parish. The investigation stalls for numerous reasons and goes unsolved for nearly 30 years. The cemetery falls into ruins from neglect and hurricanes. The front gate and many other items are stolen and the property is searched by treasure hunters trying to find Jack's money. In 2014, Brandon Nodier pleads guilty to Dorothy's murder and is sentenced to 10 years in prison. The newspaper reports he was haunted by Dorothy's ghost. Around town, it is known that his friend who was with him the night of the murder was in prison and Nodier feared he would turn him in. In parting, here are some words from Grace herself. There is no peace for me in my patio this evening. The mockingbirds and redbirds have sung their sweetest songs. The order of jasmine and lilies does not seem to ease my heart. You might say she was only a chicken, but to me she was so helpless, her soiled feathers and dirty feet. She had escaped from the chickenry close by. I never thought he would strike her or I would have offered to buy her. He stuck so quickly with a heavy plank. She lay crushed and bleeding on the walk. I was too horrified to speak. Her head moved feebly to and fro. All I could think was, oh God, oh God, how cruel a show. People pass but never seem to see or heed the suffering of the poor dumb things.